Hello everyone. In my previous articles, we saw about the what, why and how of data science and the five different ways to build machine learning models in the Oracle environment. So we saw how to use the Oracle cloud infrastructure data science environment to build your data science workloads. But we also saw other ways as well where you can use the Zeppelin notebooks on the Oracle database or using the analytics environment to build machine learning assets. Well, it's not always the case where you have to move the data across to a virtual machine or a bare metal instance and then build machine learning models like how we saw before. So the notebook sessions are actually running on virtual machines or bare metal instances, and you will have block storage backing this up. So you, know, you can move data across to this environment and then build, and that's what we did, right? By, by actually accessing data from the Oracle database and we built models in the virtual machine. But this is not always the case. You know, in the modern data lake environment where your data is actually on object storage or HDFS, you will need an analytics engine like Spark on top of it to actually process the data in a distributed fashion, you know, especially when you're de dealing with a big data problem. Right, so Oracle's cloud infrastructure data science also gives you the capability to do that. You know, you have the capability to execute a Spark workload from a notebook session as well. So what you're going to do today is look at the demo on how to do this. So we are, we are still going to build a same churn model, a machine learning model, uh, a classification model, a churn model using the data science environment, but we are going to you know execute this and build this in a Spark cluster. All right, so Apache uh, OCI Dataflow is uh, the serverless Apache Spark you know, capability that Oracle Cloud gives you, right? In order to uh, you know execute workloads in the uh, OCI Dataflow, you will need to store your assets in the object storage. So you'll need two buckets. So I have created a Dataflow bucket and a Dataflow log bucket. So Dataflow bucket is where your, your PySpark scripts will be stored. And then you can then execute the PySpark scripts in the Dataflow environment. So I'm going to show you, you know, as to how, how this is done. So what I've done here is I've just configured my environment and, you know, I wanted to see if an API works fine. So let me execute this to see if an API call to the OCI environment works fine. And yes, it is. It works fine. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an instance of uh, a data flow. So you see this, I can still access data from an object storage locally in this VM as well, but I don't want to do that, you know, if in, if, if I'm dealing with a data size that is, you know, huge or big. Instead, I, I can use the Spark environment. So what I'll do is I'll create a data flow environment. So it's with just one method you can instance, you can create an instance of data flow. So here I'm going to use a CSV file from a from the object storage bucket called DSC churn. This is a very this is a very small file, but but you know this just gives you an idea you know how this can be scaled you know especially if you're dealing with a big data problem. But consider this as your data lake for now for this demo, right? And as of now, I don't have any asset in my DSC data flow bucket. So what I'm going to do is I've created an instance of data flow. And then I'll have to create a PySpark file, a Spark file, and write some PySpark code. So using this write file action, I'm going to dump all this into this Spark, into this Python file. So what this essentially does is, you know, it is going to build a churn a classification model. So you can see here, I'm, give, I'm configuring the bucket and the file name and what the output file name is. I'm giving the schema using struct type. And then I'm creating a Spark session and giving an application name. And I'm also reading, you know, using the Spark session, I'm reading a CSV file from the object storage that I showed you before using this schema. I'm dropping unnecessary columns. And then I'm using PySpark ML to using string indexer and one hot encoder. I'm going to string index the string uh, columns, the geography and gender columns of string. Uh, so I'm going to you know, string index it and then you know, one hot encode it. So that's what is happening here. And then I'm creating a vector assembler. So I'm creating a vector of features. So I'm using these features to create a vector. 
and the assembler and I'm also assigning the output column which is with the features which is which is the vector of features I'm also uh, filling all the null values with zero then I'm transforming my data frame then I'm creating a logistic regression model using the vector of features and I'm telling what the output uh, uh, label is and then I'm creating a trained data frame so this will have the prediction so this is a PySpark file you know which is going to be written into this particular file and this then will be uploaded to the object storage and then the data flow instance will use this PySpark file and then execute it there which we'll show you so you can see as of now there's no application in the data flow environment and there is no file in the object storage so in the notebook environment what I'm now going to do is write this so now it has it has written locally and now I'm going to create a application right so just four commands what it says is it has uploaded the data flow file you can see now in the object storage if I reload you should see the PySpark file you know the Python file uploaded to this particular bucket now there you go there it is the other log bucket should not have anything now because we have not it we have not yet executed the application so it's empty perfect and there's no application yet all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the application I'm creating the application config and I'm getting a clickable link so this link takes you to the application home page the, the, the spark application home page in OCI data flow so we will get that in a sec there you go you can even run from here in using the UI but I can I'm going to show you uh, using the notebook for this demo so now you can see there's an application the spark application here well I'm going to use the default number of drivers and executors which is one and one just for this demo purpose because my data set is very small but you know you can go and edit and modify and choose the number of executors and drivers you want all right now I'm going to run the spark application so I'm going to create a run so if you go to the run section here and state accepted you should not see anything now but the moment I execute this command there you go it is initializing the run and now you should see you should see a run which is in the accepted state perfect and then it will become in progress so what's what, what now it's doing is it is accessing the CSV file in the object storage bucket and it is using the PySpark file in the object storage and it is now running the PySpark command on top of the CSP file and it is building the machine learning model in the Spark cluster. So this takes you know, a minute to run so we'll just wait for it to run. Okay so now it's in the in progress state so if you see this the state would have changed and you know the run is in progress. So the moment the run is in progress, you get a Spark UI, which then you can go and you know uh, just take a look at the Spark, uh, the lineage tag, the executors, the storage, and the environment in the Spark UI. Okay, so you can see this number of executors is one, and what the driver shape is, and what the executor shape is. So there are eight cores in total for this. So this 2.4 and 2.4 here. So there's eight cores. right and I've also given save log to local as true which means it's going to store the, the output locally in the notebook instance as well so which is quite handy you know you're getting the output back to your environment which you can again access it in other notebooks or you can keep building on top of this in the same notebook as well there you go now it's done so if you see the run details now and if I say succeeded I should see the latest run which has succeeded and this is what the, the latest run is so it's all good so uh, what now ha that happens is the output 
and the error is stored locally but it is also stored in the log buckets as well so let us reload this and see how it is Ta -da. so you have the error and you have the output so if you really wanted to download just download and then open this up you'll be able to see the output there you go see that's the prediction All right I mean it's still not a good way of viewing let me expand this so you can get a better understanding there you go so you get the prediction and you know what the features is and this is the vector vector features the same thing is also accessible locally in the data science environment as well right so there is a folder called data flow and you can see it creates here logs there you go it have we have the output and the error so let me show you the output same output stored here as well so you know i'm just showing you here but uh, you know in a, in a real world application you will store this as a modified csv file or another table and then you know you can store it also as a paki file and then you know you access this in a different environment so you can you're just enriching your da your da the data sets in your data lake and you're using spark to process it all right so you also get for every run you get a spark ui it's a traditional you know spark ui that you get with every spark application and then you can go and look at the jobs and look at the stages for every job and you can see the amount of input uh you know size of every and the shuffles that had you know that had to take place and you also can look at the storage environment the executors as well quite handy if you really wanted to do performance tuning or debugging you know of your spark application well and that's what i wanted to show you in this demo so you know this just gives you an idea as to how to use spark based processing using oci data science thank you everyone